up to the bottom of the totem. My name is... Wait, what? <laughs> because my intention was to allow people to um, see that they can have an impact, that you might inspire the person who inspires the person who lights the fire that can transform um, mm. our experience and our existence to be a Doppler effect in someone's lives. So, um, well, I kind of wonder, Sean, what, um, because I think in terms of like who I am right now, I find that I often look back and try to not pinpoint, but kind of think if I can pick out moments when I was younger, where who I am now was kind of reflected, you know, or like where I saw those things and being like, that wasn't just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is, this is, I guess, a very long question, but it pretty much says this. Like sometimes I think back to interactions that I had with my parents where I said something or did something. And as adults, I think they just were like, oh, they kind of brushed it off because they didn't realize that that was something that was coming from my personality and not just like curiosity as a child. So I wonder what you think back to that you recognize in your younger self that you realize has really been able to sprout and grow to help you become the person that is a person um, who looks at themselves as someone who can make an impact. Like when you look back at your younger self and you say, well, I realized that me being a child who questioned everything actually is something really important in me as an adult who now questions a lot of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like those little what a cool question. Those little, <laughs> those little things. Well, I mean, those little things that adults tend to brush off that they don't realize are really a part of you being an effective human being now. What are some of the things you've noticed about yourself when you look back? Well, wow, that's a, that's, wow, that's a good <laughs> question. Um, it really kind of puts into context uh, the influence of everything that makes us who we are, you know? Mm. I mean, as a child, you know, I was, I was very fortunate to have loving parents, um, to have a father who were present for me until my dad passed away. Um, I, I know that who they are shaped me. I know where I grow, where I grew up shaped me. I grew up in East New York and Boulevard houses and the projects. Um, lived there for like 14 years, then moved to, to Fort Greene in Brooklyn. Um, I know that affected me. I know the fact that I went to a private school because my parents were privileged enough to put me in private school, even as, you know, um, they, they wow. sacrificed. And my dad, like, when he was alive, he worked for the transit authority. He worked for like, he was like a collecting agent back in the days when mm -hmm. tokens still existed. And my mom, um, when she was working, uh, she was a microbiologist. Um, so like, wow. there was always, uh, I think that, you know, they, they had certain values and they kind of like instilled and shaped some of those things and, and put that in me. When I look back, you know, uh, I guess I've, all, I've had their support in a lot of ways to encourage me to, to do the things that are interesting to me, but they, you know, there, there also were these ideas of like industrial age ideas of like, you know, you gotta go to school, you gotta get good grades, get a good job, you gotta make sure you're five times better, you know, all of these things. So, which kind of led me on a track to like study math and science. And then um, I went to Carnegie Mellon uh, in Pittsburgh for math and computer science for like a year and a half. And then I left um, school because my dad became sick. So I moved back home to help take care of him. Um, but the things that I, you know, as my younger self, I think we all have, there, I think as an artist, it's been important to me to kind of preserve those things that the, the curiosity that you talk about, the whatever the, 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 the your pure, um, what I, a pure self that is like outside of the constructs of what adults and human beings and society pressures you to be or do. Um, I think at a certain moment in time, I mean, depending on what your belief system is, um, I think you realize that I think at some point I under I whether I learned or I believed that I had to 
I had to take responsibility for the things, you know, there, there are things that I can control and things that I can't, you know, I, I couldn't control where I grew up or how I was raised. Um, but, you know, once I became aware enough and independent enough to say, okay, these things that I believe about myself or whatever, this identity that I have that's associated with whatever came from my parents or my environment, my friends, that I have the ability to question those things and, and change them if I want to. Um, that became something, you know, there's a lot of ways to do that. And for me personally, just like I, being an actor has taught me certain things. And, and you, you touched on something that like Steve Jobs said in like one of his commencement speeches, mm -hmm. it's like hard to connect the dots going forward, but looking back, you know, he took a calligraphy class that ended up being a font in the Mac. You never know how the experiences of your life will kind of accumulate to your path and everything is valuable. You know, when I look back, I know that music was important. I knew that my interest in technology was important, but I also, knew that there was a certain vulnerability that I had as a child that I wanted to keep and preserve, which is valuable to me as an artist. And I think that that level of awareness, self-awareness and sensitivity um, enables me to move through the world and to, um, with a commitment to knowing as an actor, you know, like that's a terrifying thing for me as someone who's somewhat of an introvert, but with extroverted tendencies. Um, yeah. I, I know that like the thing that I love about acting, it's like one of the few vocations that teaches you about awareness, about self-awareness. And I feel like a lot of people who don't possess that trait naturally or who aren't actors or in a vocation where that is a requirement, I think to be excellent at it, you, um, you might live your life with the purview of like, okay, this is this is the hand that I was dealt, and there's nothing that I can do about it. But when you, re you know, as an actor, is you're, you're you're always transforming, and you're getting opportunities to play people that are certain distances from yourself. And there are a lot of ways to model the behaviors of other to others to adapt the traits, the experience, uh, the thinking, which which transforms the actions. So. Um, you know, the idea that like, I realized it's like, well, if I'm playing a part and I'm doing a long run of a show and I'm supposed to be like the most happy fella in the play and that's his thing. And I'm having the worst day of my life and I have a show, I have to find a way to access that. And, and actors do, um, and it's about taking inventory and figuring out, okay, what are the thoughts I need to be thinking and who do I need to be around to, sh to, to, to shift those things? So, you know, looking back at childhood that, that the vulnerability and the ability to, the willingness to learn and to question things and to see, okay, I'm not having the same experience as someone else. To what degree am I contributing to this? And what can I do? What can I learn in order to adapt, to keep me, to keep me grounded enough and, and to have enough humility to either ask for help or to realize, oh, someone knows someone, no, someone knows something that I don't know. Um, and, and I think that's like, there's humility, there's empathy, and there's also awareness, self-awareness and awareness of others. And, you know, if you're not humble and if you're not aware, then you move through life thinking you know, how you are. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you could be a bull in the, in the China shop for your, for your whole life. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, so for me, it was just like realizing, oh, you know, I, I never want to let the, the, the child in me go. Because, you know, when we're kids, it's like, yo, we ask yourself, yo, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a fireman. I want to be an astronaut. I want to like, I want to be president. I want to, you know, I want to be an admiral of a boat. And it's like, yeah. But then sometimes, you know, you start getting older. No, you got to focus. You got to do this. Yeah. You can't, you can't do all these things. Like yeah. who tells you what you can and can't do? It's just like, um, it's outrageous. I think we're, the thing that I realize is that I think we're capable of a lot more than we may realize or give ourselves the opportunity to become. And, and that's something that like keeps me wanting to, to just like improve as a human being. And, mm. you know, certain under certain circumstances, 
you know, it's, it's challenging to do that because life is, you know, constantly changing and, and how do you, you know, how do you do that? How do you actually navigate? How do you maintain your sense of self, even as everything around you seems to be out of your control? What, what can you control? Um, which was another thing that I kind of like explore in the show or I've just made a commitment to. It's just, I, I know the power of, you know, having an impact in my most local environment, um, not to, un, you know, not to underestimate the power of that, you know, just like, I'm going to make an effort to make sure that every environment that I'm in, even as I'm operating in structures that might be counterintuitive or counter the things that I want to inject in them, to find a way to, um, to lay a foundation of generosity, of love, uh, of creativity, of integrity everywhere that I go. This is the question that I really wanted to ask, um, kind of going back a little bit and mm -hmm. um, kind of starting it off with a little bit, a little story. I realized that one of the things that I remember very much was my mother kept me, um, she, like I didn't attend kindergarten or first grade um, with other students. Like my parents, my mother at the time, she was like, I think based on like Regina's personality and stuff, I think that she needs to do homeschool. And I, when my mom tells me that story, I'm like, how would you know that? How, how why would yeah. that be a decision that you would make? And she was like, I just knew. Because my sisters and my brothers, they all went to kindergarten and first grade and so on and so forth with the other students. But I realized um, that that little decision that my parents made for me helped me grow into the strong personality that I have. And I wonder, based on those decisions that my parents made, that I could be a different person than I am now. And I wonder, I wonder um, also if your parents like created a space where they abdicated for your weirdness or what, you know what I mean? Like whether they accepted like quirks that you had and didn't, you know, treat you weirdly or encourage things that you found, like you look back on now and you're like, wow, because my parents didn't cancel that in me, I, I see now that that became a strength for myself. Do you look back and see, I realize that my parents encouraged me to be a hard worker or go to these schools or do these things um, that you find is actually really important in your development of who you are now. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I feel like I kind of hit the lottery in that regard, you know, in terms yeah. of like, just, just having having a great having a great support system like mm -hmm. there I remember there was a moment in time where you know even though like I had an aptitude for math and science and it's like those things were always like it's just like art and math and science so it's just like you know in wanting the best for your for your kids or your family I get this idea of like yo you want your children to be secure and like you know maybe living in this framework of an industrial age idea of like going to school so you can get a job versus the entrepreneurial path. Um, I think there was a moment in time where I just kind of realized where it became even more apparent to me that art was important. And, and, I, and I have to say that I, like, I kind of would feel the pressure from the outside world. I'm like hyper, hyper aware of what other people think of me, you know, often to my detriment sometimes. And, and I think a lot of people struggle with that, you know, and especially like in the age of social media and all of this stuff, it, it, like those things can be intensified, but you really kind of have to let that go. And sometimes I know that, you know, people might have family members who are not in, in supportive or encouraging of their natural and inherent gifts and, and sometimes, you know, your family can be the, the people that hold you back. And um, for people who are in those situations, it's like, you know, if you're a young person, you know, yeah, you're living with your parents, you have to, you have to, you know, live under their rules. But um, to some degree, you've got to figure out a way to, to, to hold on and advocate for the thing that you know that you should be doing inside. And, and I know many people have 
that who've taken the risk of going against the wishes of their families and like pursuing something that they know they had to and yeah. <laughs> you know, ah, there's, okay. there's no I raised yeah. no, my hand very there's high <laughs> no, there's no guarantee of success but what, what i will say is like um, one of the people that I follow, one of my remote mentors is a dude named Gary Vaynerchuk, who's like, yeah, uh, Gary v. Of, yeah. in business, Gary V. And, and he talks about this thing that I, I think about a lot is, uh, you know, just like the idea of, you know, sitting in the rocking chair or going, you know, you go to a nursing home yeah. and you talk to people and it's like, you know, you'll, you'll hear a lot of stories of regrets, you know, and, oh, wow. You know, and and the thing about that, like that's the thing that kind of motivates me. It's what I don't want to. I don't want to arrive in the rocking chair. You know, you know, heaven allow me to live so long that I, I have the thought of like, you know what, man, I should have grabbed that guitar, or you know, I really wanted to write that book, but I didn't. And that, to me, that thought like haunts me and motivates me in ways that like. Just like wow, I rather go after the thing that I have the instinct to pursue and do, and mm -hmm. like fail horribly at it, and then then to not never know and like to not have tried yeah. because you know the thing that I realized or I know when I left my job and I know my brother, I have an older brother who's like ironically was very Im involved in the business back in the day. He was a kid. He did like tons of commercials as a kid and they were trying my parents were trying to get me involved and I, I wanted nothing to do with it I did yeah. I did one <laughs> I did one commercial I got hired to do this like ivory soap commercial when I was a kid and I had to sit on this this train car with another little girl and have like this little conversation and you know when you're a kid everything looks like something that might have been five feet off the ground looks like 40. I yeah. might have had a yes. I was like oh no I'm like I can't I'm like no I'm not doing this <laughs> so mad but my mom is like the sweetest person she's not like a stage mom and I, she was like don't you want to do this she tries like i'll get you chips or whatever i was like nah, i'm not doing that so that was that <laughs> they still paid me for the job but um my brother like who's like very like he stopped acting got like a traditional job and stuff and for a while like you know i there was a moment in time when i had a full-time job i worked for nyu medical center and um as like a systems analyst and i was you know, starting to make really great money. And I re I had the realization that like, and I was still doing theater, music, everything, but I was doing it at night, working full time. And uh, I just kind of like met people who were on the job who like, there was an executive there who passed away, who like played guitar and he wanted to write a novel or he started to write a book, but never released it. Another person I worked with was really into photography. And the question people used to ask me is like, yo, how do you have the energy? Like I was producing symphonics. And at this point I was like doing plays like at night, like <laughs> working yeah. nine to five and then going rehearsing at night and then doing a show. And that was when like things were kind of jutting up against each, each other. And it was like, how did, first of all, how do you have the energy to continue to do something like that? You know, we're tired after work. And I'm like, well, when you do something that you love and like when you're absolutely excited about it, it's like, it doesn't feel like work. It's like the thing that, that yeah. it's your passion, whatever that thing is. So, uh, I realized working the job that, you know, things were jutting up against each other. There was still uncertainty. I wasn't like, you know, my career was not at the point where I was making the same level of money in my day situation. But I realized that in terms of what was keeping me there and as I started to get promoted um, was fear, you know, was fear of, of not being able to sustain myself and also the fear of not pursuing the dream to the degree that I wish that I would. And I made a decision to like leave my, my, my full-time job. Um, and I didn't have a plan and not that I recommend people do that, but it's like, that was the thing that I knew that I needed to do that was right for me in that moment. And yeah. that decision my brother, my older brother was like, you know, who's like, you got a good job. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> you know, just like, and, and I was fearful that my, my, my uh, mom at the time would like not be as supportive of that decision. And, um, you know, she surprisingly encouraged me to like, she was like, that's what you need to do. Because I explained to her that like my working full time was like, I, I could feel myself dying slowly every day. It's like dying a tiny death. <laughs> 
And um, I used to have this thing that I used to say all the time when I was like in corporate America that, you know, the day, like I was very, like I had my own office, you know, things were always a really good situation for me, surprisingly when I was working. But I was like, if I ever found myself in a situation where I actually worked in a cubicle and, or actually punched a clock. And I know that there are many people that do, but like, for me, it was just like, and, and I know a lot of people are out there who are like, who, who wish they could be doing something else. And, and I think that, you know, if you're willing to do the work and learn how to build something else around your passion outside of what you're doing, um, everybody has different circumstances. Like if I had a family and if I had kids, maybe, you know, I would, I would have, wouldn't have made the, the decision that I, I did, but, um, it was the best decision that I've ever made. And not to say that I didn't struggle or continue to yeah. grow through waves of uncertainty, but mm -hmm. in terms of like quality of life, in terms of like not walking around with constant anxiety, you know, I had to go against the grain of what other people thought of like my, my particularly my mom and my brother and my brother, especially because he's just like, I don't understand you. <laughs> like you, you yeah. have a, yeah. Like having a good job in New York, like, you know, I was taking Ubers, eating out every night, treating people. Like, <gasps> I was like, oh, this is great. But then it's like, you know, you wake up at eight in the morning or the alarm clock goes off or at seven. And then it's like, you have this, you know, yeah. you're like, you have this thing in your chest and then, oh, it's Friday. And then like somewhere around Sunday evening, you start to yeah. feel that like get up again and, and do this yeah. thing. Just like, I just knew that I don't know, I just wanted another way. So that was kind of an example of just like, you know, again, you know, sometimes, you know, we all have different circumstances. We all deal di with, with different levels of difficulty and what we believe is possible and how our families raise us and our environment. Um, but the X factor is we have to like, we have to create an environment um, that we envision. We have to, you know, acting taught me that I needed to be around um, working actors like that was the thing when I was working a day job I was like I didn't know anybody who was like a working actor and that's the only thing that they did at the at the time I wasn't connected with theater companies or anything mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I needed to find a circle of friends like I, I've heard enough conversations of oh that's risky everybody in corporate America is like yo that's that's risky like you can't you know do you think who do you think you are you think you know and like what people's ideas of success and what that means exactly. just like mm -hmm. You can have money, you can have all of these things, but not be fulfilled in your life. There's so much more than, than the trophy of, of, of success, whatever the trophy is. It, it yeah. really is about the quality of experience. That to me, success is like waking up in the morning, knowing that I could do what I wanna do, spend time with who I wanna spend time with, focus on the things that, that give me the fire inside. And, um, the show for me was a manifestation of all those things. Like the, the, mm. the fact that I got produced by one of the oldest off-Broadway theaters in New York is a miracle. It's just yet another miracle and all the miracles that I've experienced by pursuing the thing that I'm extremely passionate about, by learning how to be of service to others and asking people, how, how can I serve them instead of what can they do for me? Um, being a person who connects people with other people, uh, growing and constantly developing as a human. Um, I've attracted opportunities and performed in spaces that I've, I've had no business performing in. Like through Symphonics, I, I had the privilege of performing at the Blue Note multiple times. Um, not just the, the late night, I performed on Monday nights and like was a, was a privilege to me because I'm like, yo, I'm not Stevie Wonder, I'm not Ray Charles. <laughs> I play keys, but I'm not like I, the musicians I surrounded myself with, they were like a hundred times more talented than I am. But I still had these experiences because I was able to build a platform for others and just realize that there's, there's more than one way to kind of like enter in, in the building of your dreams. You know, you, you might go in the front door and knock, nobody answers. You might go around the side and one's there, but like you might have to run around the back, hop on a dumpster, climb up to the second floor. <laughs> and step in and like the fact that you know, the, like the beginning of the show that we've been talking about the making of how to save the world there's this monologue of like i'm like oh this you know cherry lane reached out to me there's no way in the world they're gonna give me that opportunity so i might as well swing for the fences no i don't want to do a one person show yeah i want to have like five actors and a full band and yeah and i want to do this and i'm just like they're not that's not gonna happen and then it's like oh 
it, it's happening. Like, be careful mm-hmm. what you ask for or manifest. Yeah. And, but that was a result, a culmination of doing hundreds of other things, like, in not the traditional way that created that opportunity. So, you know, yeah. we, can't be li- we can't be limited by other people's uh, ideas of, of, of conformity. You know, we can't wear the uniform of conformity. Um, yeah. And uh, we have to like, I think we have an innate sense or ability. We are all creators to different degrees. We might not all be actors, but we, we all have levels of creativity and we all have a potential that if, which is another premise of the show, if you, you're courageous enough to be your authentic self, imagine you could be who you authentically are without the filters and the restrictions of what other people expect you to be, be they family members, society, uh, cultures, if, you, if you're living your authentic self to the degree that you can, and as long as it, it's not um, by virtue of you being the most authentic version of yourself, you're not causing harm to others, obviously, but yeah. if, if, if you can find that sense of yourself and do those things and, and live your life in that way and function in the hierarchy of a society that will pay you or reward you or like for, for being yourself to the nth degree, um, there's no greater feeling than that in the world. So like for me, although the show got cut short, um, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to, to, to continue or extend or whatever, even though there was like that kind of energy there, the greatest yeah. victory to me was the experience that it happened, that I was able Absolutely. to get people together, that I was able to make something with people I love and to, to show the potential of, oh yeah, if you know, sometimes we say, "Well, if I were in this position, what would I do?" Um, we we can create that opportunity for ourselves, mm. and the more that you do it, the more um, the more courageous you are at being yourself, and the more you do that, the more inspiring you are to others, or the more people are inspired by you. So just by virtue of you, y'all making this platform just like, oh, wow, they, they like actually did it. And I'm like, that's wow. cool. Oh, dude, there's somebody out there who's like, you know, I've been meaning, you know, I, <laughs> look at Joe and like, I make some really wow. great couples that I might, maybe I could do that. So they got a Zoom, what did they do? So just yeah. like you being your most authentic self and like living to the nth degree of yourself, um, it, 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 it inspires and affects others. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs>